Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be in the world. Welcome to today's conversation on Gift of Healing TV. I'm Sarah Jane, and I am delighted to be joined by my two co-hosts and our guest. So I'm going to start by saying hi to Scott. Hello, Scott. Good day, good day, good day. And hiya, David. <laughs> hi from Scotland. <laughs> and I'm going to pass over to David as Georgie is David's guest. <laughs> Thank you. It's lovely to see everybody here tonight. And thank you, Georgie, for uh, coming on and talking about your passion, your gift. I think well, I was just asking before we went live that um, although we've only known each other four years, it feels as if I've known you for a lot longer than that, to be perfectly honest. It feels yeah. as if we've been connected for quite a while uh, and it seems really weird because I thought I'm going back years <laughs> and we're not we're, well we are going back four years but it just feels that there's been a lifetime of connection between us absolutely um, so yeah so anyway um, I got to know Georgie I got to know you about four years ago and you were up here in Scotland, if that's correct. I was. And it was with Morag, with mm -hmm. a friend, a friend Morag. And we've kept in touch, and I've seen you kind of transform through many different parts of your journey, from your singing, your bringing your angelic vibrations through, and uh, developing that and the healing and you you really have a voice of an angel that tone coming through so um can you tell us a little bit about how your journey started and why you picked this particular subject for tonight to talk about okay yes so um i guess my spiritual journey started um, with Reiki, like a lot of people, Reiki seems to open the door. <laughs> and that was in 1999. Yeah. Um, and that also connected me to the angelic realms. My backstory, so before I found healing and spirituality, I was a singer and a dancer. I had a theatre school, mum, uh, was married and and I started Reiki because I thought it was going to help me heal the relationship between myself and my husband because he was in a bad way and I remember being at this um, spiritualist church and I was chatting to someone I said yeah I've just started doing Reiki and I'm really hoping you know that it's going to help me and before I could say anything else he said you're going to get divorced. I'm like, no, no, I'm doing Reiki to help me. With, you know, my husband's really depressed and he's drinking a lot and I want to help him, you know. But he was right. So that was in 1999, 2004, we split up. And um, <sighs> what can I say? That, that sort of took me on this interesting journey of healing self-healing volunteering in women's refuge centers and things like that and then basically i had a complete meltdown a complete meltdown um i would say it i it was like i was psychically raped by a therapist that i was working with i really my head, my aura, I was in a bad, bad place. And I was like on autopilot, completely on autopilot. And I managed to do a dance, my dance show on autopilot. And then at the end of that summer, I just sort of collapsed. And I found myself, my mum sent me a book and it sent me to this lady that was, um, I'm not going to mention her, but she had a circle. But through being in her spiritual circle, I met another lady who sent me to someone else. Mm 
And it was in that spiritual circle that I went into an altered state of awareness. And basically the people in the circle said, an angel spoke through me. They said I looked younger. So this was in 2010. And they said I looked younger, my hair looked longer, and I sang, or she sang. <laughs> she sang and she gave the name Love, or they asked her, What's your name? And she said, Love, but um, and then she said, I've come to heal you and help you um heal others through singing through your voice and it was quite extraordinary because I sort of like came back if you like although when I went into the altered state I was still there I wasn't one of these people that go into an altered state and are like that I was but my eyes were closed and I didn't remember what had been said so <laughs> slowly slowly um I started singing more because I actually had lost my singing voice when I had the meltdown, the breakdown. So I started singing again and was working with the angels and the voice and put, it took me, I think about five years to get angelic harmony therapy together as a course. And then I started teaching that to people. I also put out to the universe that, there's um there's songs inside me and you know um oh my favorite author who i can't think of now but he says don't die with wayne dyer don't die with your music still in you and i'm like i can't die with my music inside me <laughs> so i asked the universe <laughs> to help me and um i basically then found marcus again through various steps and within three years, we'd created five albums of healing spiritual music. So, so there's that. And then along that story, um, I went to New York um, and I was visiting my friend's sister. And she asked me to look after her daughter, who's about seven, nine. She said, you know, she can I sort of do some healing with her? So I taught her Reiki basics. And she gave me some healing and she said profoundly, you are the angel. The angel is in you. And then I had this ha ha moment that <laughs> the angel speaking was like my higher self. And for me, that's how I engage with my team of angels. And I believe we've all got an angel within us, but some people not, might not perceive it as an angel. They might perceive it as pure light or a mermaid <laughs> or a dragon <laughs> or a Buddha or, or whatever. But it's that bit of us that is internal that lives forever and ever and ever. Uh, it's such a fascinating story and you've come through so much trauma trauma mm. like many people will recognize you know you're stripped away you kind of 3d self is stripped away mm. and you're left with who you are and that happens so many times uh, mm. doesn't it for many of us because we get stripped away i know when i open this all came to me. Everything was stripped away. I lost my home and everything. And you're left with what's inside. Mm. And it's getting in here to see how strong you are and what are the gifts that you naturally have that spirit can come through and work with. So it's really fascinating. But you're now working with the voice a lot more because we say, I think, it was about four years ago when you was really coming up with the singing, wasn't it? Yeah. That's and the healing. That was really quite a strong time there. You gave me a reading. I don't know if you remember. You won't remember because we don't remember when we give somebody a reading because we'd go crazy. 
<laughs> yeah, I get, I have enough holding mine in my head. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you gave me the words heavenly harmony because it was like angelic harmony therapy. At the time, I was thinking, oh, this therapy, okay. it puts people off. So you gave me these words, heavenly harmony, and it's okay. been things have been brewing. I did a little bit of training in something called Pelowa um which is a yeah. form of healing which expands and shifts the consciousness and then i got this heavenly harmony is within you you have the key mm -hmm. and then i literally i had this another aha moment all the music that i've created with marcus there's a lot of light language in it and i started mm -hmm. then understanding what the light language meant in english <laughs> and started piecing it all together and so heavenly harmony is a modality that i'm teaching it's not on my website as yet because my son's overloaded <laughs> but i've um, tested it out with some people and i've created it as an online course because i think you know the the covid <laughs> that sort of like made us all think about how we can connect with one another still when everyone was connecting all over the world and i thought i need to create this course so that the majority of it is on online um, video course and then the end of it people connect with me get their attunement because it's all energy and it's voice activated you don't need to put hands on the head and do this and that it's all voice activated so um yeah so heavenly harmony is basically the angel in me honors the angel in the client and then the angel in the practitioner who learns the modality honors the angel in their clients. So it's about sort of like not thinking about some, although we're working with source energy, it's like not working from our ego. It's working from the angel inside us. And it's not just sound, because I know that the thing with angelic harmony therapy not everyone feels comfortable using their voice. So I created with the help of um, a composer, some music that holds the space. And then depending on what your angel inside you as a practitioner wants you to share, you're either gonna sing, tone, hum, speak, use light language, or use, you know, some people do coding like this. <laughs> Yeah. Whatever your inner angel wants you to do, you will do. But it's all held in heavenly harmony, which so heavenly harmony is not just a healing modality, but it's the idea of we create heaven here on earth. Heaven is within us. Happiness is within us. It's all within us to access. So thank you, David, okay. for the name Heavenly oh. Harmony. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure scott wow uh that, that was a load um I, I i agree uh ricky is and we all as we are all reiki masters ricky is kind of the gateway drug to um to all of the energy healing uh modalities really it's kind of that that gateway to be able to to bring it out to us i think all, we all have very similar stories and that it's broken down until you get to a certain point and then you're opened up and that's when all of this comes and all of our journeys have been kind of you know i i'm a I'm virgo i'm very systematic automatic right so i thought oh if i do this then i do this then i do it's a step right and no someone laughed and said oh no 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 you'll you'll learn you'll, uh energetic journeys like this never go anywhere but in a really messed up line right? so i've been over here and over here and over here and over here and it just bounces all over the place but it all starts with that inner healing which you did over and over and we constantly learn new things we have that curiosity about life we have that curiosity about energy we have those that want to be able to experience from a new perspective 
Uh, and that's, you, you had said that, if I am correct, when you were in the circle, that you looked younger, the younger you. Oh. Now, now you look, you, I think you look the younger you now. I've been told as I've gone on this journey that I've actually looked better than I did 15 years ago, that I have um, kind of stepped back in youth by doing the practices, by constantly um, doing yoga, doing meditation, doing, doing clearing, doing all of the work. And I, I don't know about you, but I find that I have more joy of life. There is more uh, curiosity, the want to expand, the want to touch more people, to collaborate, to, to, to find more about this world that we live in. And the question I had for you was in doing, you do angelic readings. Is that correct? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually have, <laughs> I actually have an angelic reading scheduled in about two, two hours after this program. Um, just kind of happened that way. And I, I find that the intuitiveness of it, that what, from what I've seen and, and I've just brushed against it, is amazingly accurate, amazingly um, eye-opening in what, working with that. And what, what about it surprises you is the question. When doing an angelic reading, you mean? Yes. Guidance, what surprises me? Um, how, how they meet the person where they are always meets them where they are um that's the that's like something that i find very touching because they just seem to hit the right spot i guess um and i also find it very empowering for the person it's there's never any you should or you must it's always and i find that it's quite reflective as well so it's like encouraging the person to feel their heart yeah it's all right come back something i said it's a way with the angels. <laughs> or the fairies. <laughs> the fairies, yeah. Sorry, Sarah. No, I no, I've been I've been listening because yes, as, as Scott said, we've got, there are similarities in, in store in and our stories, and I'm obviously not talking about things we make up, it's things that have happened in our life. Oh. And I work with the sound, I work with toning, I work with the voice, and some of that is spoken. Um, yeah. And it's trusting it all for me, because yeah. yes, then my journey started with Reiki. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we have the chakras, our energy centers, each one of those is connected to one of the archangels. So there's the, the seven main, um, but there are considerably more than that um, within our bodies. And yes, I've connected with dragons too, um, <laughs> very much connected with them. And it's, for me, it's always about trusting that, but listening to you speak, and thinking about something that has got, and I didn't know whether I was going to be mentioning this, but I do think to a certain degree, there's an element of relevance. Earlier today, now I have been affected by hot flushes or tropical moments or whatever people want to call them for about 20 years. And I still get them on a pretty regular basis. Um, and it was only today that I found myself thinking, is this actually spirit trying to get my attention? There's nothing wrong with me. 
And so I got my dousing pendulum out, which I'm very good at doing. It's right here and it's usually to hand. Um, and it was said, is this spirit, my, one of my angels, one of my guides, one of my guardians? But it's a higher energy because, and this is what I'd suggest to everybody, is when you start down this path, always ask at all times to work with the highest energies that choose to work with you. It's important um, so that you are working with the highest possible energy. So as you grow, so the energies that you work with grow. And I was very definitely given a yes, that the hot flushes are those trying to get me to listen. And it's just like, okay, I've got it. And if we take those things away from me and you can find another way, that would be brilliant, but that could be even worse. So, but... I know there's going to be time now for me to work with that so that they know I am listening, that it's really important that your guides, your guardians, your inner angel, um, for some people, they may consider it to be their soul, their spirit essence, whatever it is, but we're all connected, is that way of connecting with you and letting you know there is something they wish you to be aware of. I don't know whether I don't hear things, I don't see things. So it's it, it's about becoming aware. So there was one awareness. And now I've got to open to the other awarenesses. But you know, have they got a way that they connect with you, or is it something now that you're just so open to? I don't know whether you hear, whether you see. You know, what what? How does that work for you? So mainly it's a knowing I just know um but that's backed up with feeling and hearing I'm not much of a seer <laughs> um yeah I've uh, yeah maybe I'm not meant to see I don't know <laughs> but I definitely um and my son's Claire audience as well which is interesting and he hears spirit out here <laughs> So, um, yeah, the knowing um, I find, I actually touch upon the Claire's in um, in my course. And um, I think a lot of light workers and people on this journey get beat themselves up about about it. I don't see. I don't hear. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, you your soul knows. Yeah. And you've got to trust that inner knowing. And if you want, you can always then ask for some clarification in the physical world. Like, for instance, I do this quite a bit. In 2020, I needed to escape Essex because I was living there at the time. And it was before they brought in, you had to have passport things to travel and all of that. And um, I felt I went into a meditation and I saw cactus and I saw a camel and like desert like landscape and oh and I got the words the genie is you you are the genie sort of thing make your own magic and I thought mm, it's, it's that's not turkey that's and it just came into my mind um Tenerife Tenerife so I said okay if Tenerife is the place for me to go team I want to see a camel and I don't mind how I see it, but I need to see a camel where I wouldn't normally see a camel. So um, I didn't tell anyone this apart from my friend Sarah. And I was in Scotland again at the time, the other side of Scotland. <laughs> and um, a couple of days later, my son sent me a picture of a camel in Nottingham High Street. Nottingham is like a city in the UK <laughs> where you don't see camels. I'm like... <laughs> thanks thank you universe and then when i went to the um tenerife and stayed in my airbnb for six weeks i connect it i found out my mercury line run through there which was amazing i really then got back into my jazz um the the little town next to the airbnb and i didn't know it when i booked was called la camella the camel there was a camel park opposite <laughs> And I also connected with Freddie Mercury. 
like he was around me very much it was it was a really fabulous six weeks of like spiritual retreat <laughs> that's amazing it's incredible that we've got so much inside and all we've got to do is to say all we've got to do <laughs> but once connect we get this full kind of explosive opening to so much more and um i'll come back to that in a minute but what's just reminded me i started working with a lady called isabel stanford and we've known each other since i came back from the netherlands in 2016 and we just knew we just knew we were a part of something a long 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 time ago uh, but we didn't hear it. We just felt it. And I think the more people can get into feeling rather than thinking, it can open yeah. the doors so much. And I think that's what Reiki done for me 30 years ago. It opens a door to really feel. And we started working with the Essenes about creating the angel within. So oh my um, goodness. there were... Yeah, and um, there were prayers. There were the Essene prayers um, we done every day. And what it done, it helped you connect to your angel within. It took me so far, but then I had to go down a different direction to open up even further. But it created the doors opening like Reiki created so many doors from a mediumship and everything else and having the confidence so there's such a link here so it does once you start getting in touch with yourself it brings so much so people should not worry i agree people shouldn't worry you either feel it and you know it and sometimes that can be a bit of a hindrance it can come with your feeling more than what you wanted to from the outside. But once you get that inwardly, it brings so much out and it fulfills you, doesn't it? I think it fulfills your place here, Georgie. Def definitely, definitely. And it's so interesting you say about the Essenes because they, <laughs> they're working very closely with me um and some of the chants i've got i didn't know but i shared some of them with one of my friends and she said that's an Essene chant and i said really <laughs> it's like wow oh, I didn't, I didn't i'm gonna know ask that. for clarification i'm gonna ask for clarification what these scene are i'll let david answer that because he might have a better explanation than me um <laughs> my understanding and my knowing and please if anybody's got a view please uh put it up there as well the essenes were a group of people um let's say what we would call a tribe of people um but a group of people they the ones that i'm aware of and there were pockets all over the world uh going under different names the ones i understood were in the area of palestine at the time and then when the Romans came in and went on their crusades, um, the Essenes were a group of people around biblical times that had so much knowledge. They really worked with the stars. They worked with crystal and they had everlasting energy from crystal. They had this inner knowing and it was man, woman or child. There was no differentiate. So they hold they held um a lot of inner knowledge, shall we say, a lot of higher knowledge. When the Romans came in and done their crusades in that part of the world, um they kind of um for want of a better word, they cleared the people who were Essenes because they held too much knowledge and they took some of their stories and turned them into the Gospels, into the Bible. 
and they took their stories. So the church, the Christianity church, then took some of that information and took it away from the people. Um, so uh, they were kind of holders of ancient knowledge and they used to work with sound. They worked in chambers where they just had their client on a table and they sung in the frequency of what they felt would heal these people. They had great astrological um, knowledge of the stars, where they were, how they held the space. They were incredible people, but that information was taken and that group of people were taken away, shall we say, um, because they held too much pay. They held too much. They didn't hold the power above people because they were just as everybody else was. But from an outsider's point of view, they held too much knowledge for, for those that came in to create a crusade and wipe things out. I hope I've explained that quick enough. So they were the, um, some people through Dolores Cannon, if anybody's heard of Dolores Karen, Cannon, she worked a lot with the Essenes and they were like, um, you would have called the disciples of the time at that time. That's how she described them. I think some people might have heard it but called us the Essenai. Only you're right yes. about the pronunciation because I just got this out. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just like, well, I've heard of them. They're the Essenai. But and I've just and I asked the question: Should it actually be said a scene? And the answer to that was absolutely yes. So, so that's that. yeah, that's how I've been guided. But I'm open to, you know, uh, yeah. other people's awareness and knowledge. Yeah. So they really worked. And you've done these prayers every day to connect to all the elements of the earth, and using your voice especially was to strengthen and bring out that angel that and create the angel within through these practices and that's what they've done and these ceremonial things every day that's so cool because i i deliberately don't read <laughs> and i deliberately don't listen to a lot of stuff because i want to know that what i've brought through i've brought through and I've not regurgitated it from somewhere else. Yeah. So to hear all that is just blow my mind, David. <laughs> what I what I do, I've got some uh, prayers and chants yeah. from them daily. So with your permission, I'd like to send them to you, yeah, so you can have a look and see if they resonate with what your the light language you're bringing through yeah. and everything else yeah i mean i could why do i have a feeling why do i have a feeling that there will be light language involved today <laughs> Miss, Miss Sarah, I, was, I was going you... to suggest that that one chant that uh, one um yeah chant is a uh, shalom alok which is peace be with you and that was um and I had that clarified by um, another lady who's channeled a book. Um, so, yeah, that's that's I use that one a lot, a lot. And it's really good to sort of like walk <laughs> and say it to yourself. Say it again. Okay. Shalom alok. Shalom alok. Shalom alok. Yeah. And it's... Um, yeah but i don't think i i think that's probably aramaic that sounds aramaic yeah yeah no i i so that's really after those four years it's really interesting we've yeah. got that connection just yes. come up sorry sarah yeah no it's just that i sort of found that i speak like language and i heard somebody say at one time Oh, but you can't, you know, no, you don't sing like language. And I thought, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> if you can speak like language, you can sing like language. How can anyone say, I know. It was just cost, you know, the famous people that are doing like language aren't singing it because they're not singers. 
Yeah, but then I can't call me a singer. But you know what? Because I channel this, it is what it is. And when I did this at yeah. a talk one time, sort of, um, and the lady, one lady said to me afterwards, she said, that was a lullaby. And it was okay. just like, oh, okay. <laughs> if it is, yeah. it is. But so many people say to me, oh, well, what have you just said? And it's just, and it's just like, I have no idea. But for me, it isn't about translating it because it is for the heart and for the soul it isn't for the head and the mind that can then potentially distort the meaning of that um and so i do love the fact that i have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> the majority of the time i don't know what i'm saying but the light language that was translated was needed for the manual and to teach the course so yeah. But most of the time, I don't know what I'm saying. And I was singing um, for an, like a, a normal church <laughs> and they wanted me to do jazz. And I said, but oh, I'm going to do a few of my spiritual numbers. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. And then the priest came up to me at the end and he said, you were singing prayers, weren't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, and you were singing in tongues. And I said, well, I call it light language, but yeah, I guess you'd call it singing in tongues. And he said, yeah, that was very powerful. So I thought, wow, what a progressive priest. <laughs> Ab absolutely. absolutely. So yeah. would you like to... It's really fascinating. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was going to say, would you like... because. I'm quite happy to. I, I, ne I never turned down a chance to share light language in any form. Um, but would you like to share a little? So because we talk about it, but if there are people watching this who have no idea what we're talking about, if they've at least yeah. had the chance to experience it. So whether you wish to speak it or sing it, please go ahead and I might just send some after. <laughs> OK, yeah, that's that's cool. I will start by opening with like the heavenly harmony sort of light language prayer if you like which holds the space ayawa shayaria ayawa shayaria ayawa shayaria ayashaya ata ayashaya ata ayashaya ata That is a power. Every time, and I, I really only really heard Sarah do it, but it's powerful each and every time. And I, it's almost uh, to me, um, had an experience with Native American, and the 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 tone and the phrase in the American Native Native American languages is very similar to light language, and I I didn't understand it, but I understood it. There was that knowing. Yeah. And 
Yeah, and it and it you you get it centered right here, and that's <sighs> wow. Thank you. No, thank you. What I would say to folks is what I say always is this isn't about what you hear; it is about what you feel. Um, especially when we're obviously working through technology, um, and so let's just see. Uh, and I suppose we are. We, we're bringing she all on technology. from the angels, aren't we? It's it's our angelic voice. So um, it's really incredible. Cool. Beautiful. I felt um, almost like Kuan Yin was with us. Lots of love and compassion and peace. Yeah, it's really, it's really fascinating because what you've taught, what I think has been learned from, especially yourself tonight, apart from anything else, is the trust that you have in yourself to allow that just to come through and it is really being connected to your higher self or your inner self or your soul however anybody wants pardon me to see it but really trusting and feeling fully and not being afraid to stand in that power and i think that's what so many people we don't have is a trust in ourselves because we've had experiences that have taken the rug from under our feet so many times. We've been told in earlier in life, should we say, oh, you can't do that. You're not strong enough for that. You're not tall enough for that. You know, whatever you want to do. And we have a lot taken away from us. So to get to this point, of trusting and trusting whatever comes through that's a lot of work you've done on yourself you know especially through your shared experiences you know and the same with you sarah mm. it must be wonderful just to be feeling and being guided by feeling is that what that's the biggest lesson for you or has it been a more major lesson for you uh, Georgie uh, what trust you mean yeah um, yes yeah I think so just trust 
trust to let go of the mind and allow the voice of the heart, the voice of love to speak, to sing, to dare, <laughs> to let their <laughs> dreams come true. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but it's, I just admire that power as yourself, Sarah, just to go out and allow this to come through. It really is about trusting the self or trusting our support systems and people uh, unseen behind us. But do you think that trust came out of the trauma and say, I'm going to build me now? Um, that could be a question for both you and Sarah. Do, does that trust come out? I'm now going to trust me through that trauma that I've been through. Uh, I think it's taken me a long time because for me it was 20, 2009 um, and I've had a lot, I've had more lessons since hmm. I've had, um, I've given my power away and had healing from people that I probably shouldn't have had healing from. They've offered me healing and I've stupidly said yes, because I thought everyone's love and light. And then I've ended up with, um, attachments and then I've had to go and get someone to clear it all out of my system and oh. then when I was in America um I got sort of like um I want to use the word black magic something uh a shaman uh, uh not all shamans are working in love and light again more more sort of like attachment stuff coming into me um so it's taken me a long time to actually really trust myself and really um yeah i'd say probably the last four years i've really stepped into that i'm gonna say before anything else louise says really felt that it was so lovely it took me to another place and time and i started speaking like language too Aww. um and and i think that's just it. I remember um, Patricia, who we've we've had on here, and um, Janine Savia, um, sort of who we've also had on this program. We did a light language program um, back when Anol I was working with Anolia doing this, um, and Janine's in New Zealand. Um, Patricia was in Scotland. She's now in Ireland, um, and they were talking about language, and I think they spoke it. And I sort of went away, and I suddenly thought oh, I can do it. And I just started doing it. And it was just, it's that, it is all about that trust. Because mm. I don't see anything, because I don't hear anything, it's just a pure sense of trusting. And it, and, it, and I think it actually, it's, it is purely about trust. When working with the Reiki, I offer that energy the intention is always for the highest good of the individual or individuals, if it's a group thing, um, or it's the healing list. Um, it's just offered with the intention for the highest good of each of all, uh, for the whole, the one, the all, the individual, you know, sort of. And that's my intention. It's that detachment from outcome. Um, which I was told at one stage by somebody, oh, we'll never be able to be detached. There are times when I think I'm probably too detached, <laughs> but, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that detachment is what empowers other people to take that energy. And there was a question from somebody on a, one of the social medias today about, you know, what is a healer, um, you know, and, and, and how do they, do, you know, and it was just like, well, actually, you're your own healer. The only person who can heal you is you. What people who are referred to as healers do is offer you the energy, a tool, an instrument that if you choose to accept it, can empower your own self-healing. And I just trust if people are meant to take it, they will take it the way they wish to, to where they wish to. It's got nothing to do with me. And it's got nothing to do with what they think their choice is either. <laughs> and it's, yeah, you know, oh, right, absolutely. Um, I, I actually had 
a student and he said, oh, I was at a football match. The team I was supporting was losing. I opened the Reiki channel and they won. I actually did turn around and give him a good ticking off and said, you cannot manipulate an outcome. If you're going to offer energies, you offer it to the whole. But you did not make that happen. It would have happened without you. And that's the difference. And I know, Scott, you and I with Soul Empowerment, we've had this conversation with David and, and Gail recently about spiritual ego and spiritual essence. And this is what has been mentioned here without us using those terms. When we are in ego, we think we're the ones in control and we are the ones that are best for everybody. When we're in spiritual essence, we can come from that place of allowing each individual to be in that place for themselves. And we we are a part of it, but we're not. Um, and it's it, there's, it, there's, there's no ego involved. Um, although I have been said, had people say to me, oh, you are special. And I know I've turned around and said, I know, but there's no ego involved in that <laughs> because we are all special in our own unique way. And nobody should ever, ever doubt that. Um, so, um, we aren't too far off of the end. So, David, have you, David Scott, have you got any final questions for Georgie? Well, um, sorry about popping off a couple of times. I, I don't know what's going on with my internet. I, it's a day of troubles. So, Georgie, uh, thank you for, for coming. Thank you for the beautiful insights. Um, I offer when I when I connect with people, I've offered healings and, and walk through and I'm always very, very blessed that that people not knowing who I am. Will accept that healing for me and I offer it and I always very upfront and, and I hate this part about attachments, by the way, from others, because the way that I've always learned it, taught it, accepted it, knew it, known it is pure love, pure light with no attachments, no, no attachment to the outcome, much like Sarah said, she describes it beautifully always. And I'm, I am so sorry that you had that experience with it. Um, I was always told there's a lot of dark out there. And, and I, we, we take away the attachment from the head, right, Sarah? Um, that's when ego gets involved and goes, Oh, I can, uh, I can really mess with people. Ah, that's wow. Uh, talk about ego. Um, with your clientele, do you have? I, I find that people get to a point and they say, "Thank you, I'm I'm good." Oh. Do people do people do that with you also? With do you find that with clients is that they're in a crisis, um, they're looking for answers. You you come down, you give them kind of their their mm -hmm their messages and they kind of go off, they'll come back to get kind of confirmation and then they're okay. Do you find that? Is that what your experience is with this, with, with clients? Yes, yes, because quite often what I do, there's a mixture of the guidance and the sound and the healing. It's all sort of a part of a package really because often I can't do one without the other. And often someone will come back to me and say, wow, that's really shifted or, wow, you must be a witch because this happened. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, no, you, you, you did the healing yourself. I just held the space. And sometimes you hear nothing and you think, oh, I wonder if that person was OK. And then their, you know, their sister or someone will come and contact me and say, wow, you know, you really helped my sister. She left that abusive relationship and it's like it's wonderful when you get those messages but we have to know that well we can't attach to the outcome if you hear something like that it's wonderful if you don't and you know that they're still going around in circles and they're not allowing the change to happen then you've got to accept that yeah it's their journey 
Yeah, I, 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 unattached that 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 detachment, right, Sarah? Um, mm -hmm. That you can only offer it, and if it's accepted and allowed, uh, you know. You know, we, we look at things and sometimes we see them so simply and say, no, 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 all you have to do is this and, and everything will be fine. <laughs> and, and, but it's not for them. It's in their time, in their space. And so you just hold, as you said, you hold the space for them and be able to hope that they can um, be vulnerable enough in order to take it in. Yeah. Well, um, firstly, thank you for coming on and sharing your experiences and your work and letting us hear some of that as well, Georgie. Um, what I must say to you as well, before I say this last bit, is the Essenes wrote the Dead Sea, they were the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Oh. And they were the ones that put them in the clay pots to hide and try and keep their religion and keep their understandings going. So they were the authors of the Dead Sea Scrolls, some of which have gone missing since they've been found. I'll leave it at that. So um, we won't know what's ever in them. But would you? how would you say to people if they're really struggling about getting in touch with themselves you know uh is there a specific way you could suggest or gosh you know that, that's trust, a whole trust whole is a, yeah that, it's quite but, big but i think <laughs> a lot of the things that can help us get back to ourselves are the things that we probably enjoyed as children so for me that singing that's dancing and that's being on the beach and having my feet on the sand. So find something that you loved as a child, see if it still resonates with you and try doing some of that. And then that gets the ball rolling. Cause I think a lot of us, it's our, you know, we're stuck sometimes with inner child stuff, mm -hmm. stuff from childhood that stops us going forwards and stops us, um, because we weren't allowed to trust ourselves as children. So then how can we trust ourselves as adults? If we said we were hungry yeah. when we were hungry, but we weren't allowed to eat because it didn't suit our parents at that moment in time, or we wanted to go to the toilet, but the teacher wouldn't let us, but really we <laughs> knew we needed to go, but we wet ourselves anyway. You know? <laughs> so it's like we were taught not to trust ourselves as children. So I think yeah, yeah going back to the inner child would be a good start thank you thank you and thank you for inviting me <laughs> oh uh, it's a pleasure yeah no th thank thank you georgie it, it's and folks if you would like to connect with georgie i have just put her website address up in the chat I will also make sure, so if you're watching this video on YouTube, which will be up tomorrow as it's evening here in the UK, um, it'll be up tomorrow. Um, I will make sure that the website addresses for all of us are there. So if you wish to connect with any of us, please do. You know, we, we share these programs to support you. Um, they're all free to watch. Please do feel free to connect with us. Um, we share these just for that reason to support those of you out there that are ready to support yourselves because we can't do it for you, um, but we can support you through it. And to add to the beautiful energies of the toning and the sound and the light language we've had here today, we've actually got a experience, the healing energy of sound with myself, with David, with Joanne Bracken and with Patricia Kerens next week. So if you'd like to have another experience of sound energy, um, do consider joining us again next week. In the meantime, folks, thank you to my co-hosts, David and Scott, and our wonderful guest, to Georgie Dean. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that the information we have shared here has supported you all. Love, peace and light, sweet souls. Namaste. Namaste.